So we got Taz on the line right now, so we want to get to him right away. Taz, how are you doing today? Hey, Dave. What's going on, man? No, uh, not too much. Not too much. Uh, how's that? You know, you've been in in uh, you've been on main events on pay per views before, and now you were like uh, on this pay per view, which was probably the biggest. I'm sure the biggest money show probably in the history of wrestling. What's what's your feelings going in being like a player on on a big show as opposed to being the, you know like one of the the main events. On, on a pay-per-view, but not as big. I mean, which like which made you more nervous, or, or if that's even the right term? Um, as far as nervousness, I um, kind of feel the same if I was main event in like an ECW pay-per-view or, uh, you know, working second, third, or, or first or fourth match for a WWF pay-per-view. But last night I was a little bit more nervous than usual. We all were. It was WrestleMania 2000, and you could just feel the buzz throughout the whole day, actually the whole week doing the fan fest that... Um, you know, this was this was a mega mega event. I was man, it was not to sound corny, but I was just happy to be a part of it. I mean, um, as far as going from like a main event guy on a pay per view to doing a, a non main event, obviously, I I knew that coming in the door here. I mean, uh, I didn't expect to go into a main event right away because if you start out your career, your first two, three, four, five, six months main eventing, where are you going to be three years from now? You can't stay on top forever, so. Excuse me. I'm very happy with um, my placement right now, and uh, I'm very happy with my progress, and I feel the front office is also. Uh, I know that's not really a juicy uh, juicy comment. I mean, I'm sure the, the, the people, especially on the net and stuff and in the sheets and whatnot, would love to hear me say, Ah, oh, man, I should be in a main event. I'm pissed off. No, I shouldn't be. Man, being a main eventer in ECW or WCW is completely different than being a main eventer in the WWF and uh, you really know that when you're backstage and when you work for this company. I mean, this is, uh, you know, you're playing in front of 15,000 people, uh, 12,000 people, uh, 10,000 people on house shows, TV, you know, TV shows, 15,000 people. You know, I mean, it's like, this is big time, period. I mean, big, big time. I mean, guys like Rock and Hunter and, and, and Show and stuff. I mean, uh, Austin Undertaker. I mean, uh, you really feel that they're, they're big time major league players when, when you're here. You know, it's, it's, it's kind of a, it's kind of cool to have now, now I have a goal to, to become that again. Just like when I started in ECW, uh, everybody thinks that, oh wow, Taz is a main eventer in ECW. But people forget that I didn't start out in ECW as a main eventer. You know, I mean, my first three and a half years in ECW, I, I wasn't, I was far from a main eventer. But see, people forget that. You know, you gotta evolve into, what Paul Heyman wanted me to, me to be, or now in this case, i got to evolve into what Vince McMahon wants me to be and what, what I can portray. And I'm completely at whole with where I am right now. In, in, uh, you know, in making the move several months back, um, you, know, you, you basically had the, the mentality, I guess, because um, you had kind of made the, the, the statement to me, yeah, before, actually before you made the move, that your decision was based on, I mean, obviously monetarily is a big, is a big, big thing, but like being a big fish in a smaller pond or being like a smaller fish in a bigger pond. And what was, you know, aside from the monetarily thing, I mean, what was the reasoning for you to make the move? The main, main reason, and this is not a slap in the face towards ECW or Paul Heyman, because I owe Paul so much. He, he got me here, and I never expected to be here. I, I was very content staying in ECW. I was making great money there, <laughs> excuse me, and he was taking good care of me and my family. But the main reason was my last you know, six months in ECW, I started to get um, uh, very complacent. I started to get, I felt like I was getting lazy. I felt like there was no more challenge. I had done everything there is to do there. I'd won every belt. I'd been pushed to the moon. There was like, what more to do? You know, what more to do? I mean, uh, you know, part of, um, a major part of being a, a successful pro wrestler is having a passion when you hear your music hit and you walk out there. Uh, people who know me personally know that I, I definitely always wanted to perform in front of monstrous audiences and I always wanted to wrestle in beautiful arenas and I feel like I've earned my stripes to, to be able to take a shower if I have a match or be able to not have a, you know, filthy locker rooms. Uh, but that wasn't the main reason. The, 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 those filthy locker rooms and those smaller arenas uh, made me a good living for a long time and got me to this level. Um, but the main reason in a nutshell is I started to feel a little bored. You know, my training was affected by it. I wasn't training as hard. I wasn't, I just wasn't, I started to lose that passion. You know, now coming here, you know, it's like I'm getting a whole, a whole new realm of 
people to work with, you know, different people I've never worked with, or people I haven't worked with in years, and, you know, uh, the challenge of not being the top guy, and, and politics don't play a major role in this company, uh, unlike other companies. So, I mean, um, it, if you start getting bored, if you start getting like it's too easy for you, then, then you have no challenges, and then you can't, you know, you can't achieve nothing. And that, I'm the type of guy that I want to challenge him. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I got a hell of a challenge here. <laughs> What's a, what, do you have? Do you have like a short-term goal as far as like people that you want to you want to be in there with, or uh, you know, a direction that you want to go, or is right now you're just kind of uh, waiting waiting for something to be given to you, I guess, or something. Well, well tonight, after uh, I don't know if I'm really allowed to expose what's happening tonight, but tonight I kind of uh, I'm heading in a direction that I want to be in right now, and. Uh, uh, I'm starting a, an angle tonight with someone, so um, someone that it's going to be real cool, uh, and I think we're going to have some really strong matches, and it's a pretty, uh, it's going to be a pretty entertaining program. Um, so I'm happy about that, and, and short-term goal is a good way to put it, Dave, because that's the way you do this. You know, when you work here, you know, you, after I do this program, I'm hoping to go to to maybe somebody else. I mean, for me, the main people is hard to do right now. I mean, I, I definitely would like to go back and do stuff with Kurt Angle again. I mean, I feel like me and Kurt have a really good uh, a good uh, uh, mixture in there together. We play off each other real well. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to working with guys like Eddie Guerrero, who I think has become a one hell of a heel here fast. You know, uh, 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 the, you know, Benoit, obviously. Chris Jericho and I, I think, can do some really good business. I mean, I'd like to stay in the mix with those type of guys, and, and, I, and I think that we could do some really cool stuff. Do you expect to get like uh, more mic time w now that you have a new program? I guess it's starting to start tonight. Yeah, I, I think that's going to start coming. I mean, I you know so many people like on my website. I mean, they <laughs> message board. Everyone's like, why don't you talk more? And I, I, I hear it all the time everywhere I go. Why don't they let you talk? Why don't you let, let you talk? I mean, uh, I had to prove myself. I believe there's the reason why I wasn't talking. I had to prove myself as a competitive worker and a hard working wrestler and to get my character over as a kick-ass, no-nonsense type of, you know, street guy, street dog, what have you. And now, um, oh, a little, you know, it's a pre-tape going on right now. Um, <laughs> you're getting it live, right? Um, what do you call it? Uh, I, I, um, I think that uh, my time will definitely start coming real soon. Um, uh, and and I'm... Um, I'm I'm happy about that because I'm I'm really anxious to start doing that and and I think the front office wants me to start doing it too. And I actually was wondering this myself is um um did you get any of that glass on that closing spot in your in your match last night in your eye or anything like that? Uh, yeah, I got a little bit. Um, they 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 had taken it out with a like a wet cheek tip or some crap. They, I got a, a I think a lot went in it and then it came out as I was rubbing my eye. I was on the mat. Um. Uh, it, it got me pretty good. It didn't cut my eye, and it didn't cut my eyeball. I was lucky. It just uh, there was a small piece stuck in my eye that they'd taken out. But uh, yeah, it wasn't that bad though. I made it look worse. I made it look worse than it was. Oh, okay. <laughs> they say I can't um, sell. You know. <laughs> <laughs> no. What's what's your feeling coming? Uh, what's your feeling coming off of that show? Was it as an experience? How would you compare it to say uh, you know an, an ECW pay per view after the fact? That's that's a tough question. A good question, but tough question. I mean, ECW pay per views. Um, you know, I mean, I, a lot of times I had the weight on my shoulders. I mean, it's kind of cool not having the weight on your shoulders, but I also kind of miss it. You know what I mean? So because I was used to it. Um, but the feeling after this show was uh, amazing because it, it was a big success. You know, we had a we had a post WrestleMania party at the hotel for for the staff and VIPs and stuff, and you could just feel the electricity throughout. You know, the building from from the boys to to, to the people who were behind the scenes to the office. You know, everybody was just so happy, and uh, it just felt like. Um, like, you know, we won the big game, that type of thing, you know. It was a real cool success party. Everybody just eating, drinking, having a good time and all that stuff. And it was a really cool feeling. And I'm new here, so it was like it just felt cool to be. It's a real team atmosphere here. You know, it really is. As far as the hardcore battle royal, I was, um, at first, when I was told I was involved with it, and I seen all, the, all, you know, all these guys involved, and I'm like, well, man, this is... This could be a uh, this could this could be bad because there's so many bodies involved. A lot of times when that happens, it gets become a cluster, you know. Um, but it ended up, and each minute that ticked by during that match, uh, it was cool. I mean, and I watched the replay last night, and the camera. I mean, 
watching on TV doesn't do it any justice. I mean, if if you were there, I mean, <laughs> anywhere near ringside, man, we all were just tattooing each other. Believe me. Uh, in ECW, I've done a lot of stuff like that, worked real stiff with guys. But this was this was stiff. I mean, <laughs> we were going, I mean, believe me, 15 minutes, too. So it was, uh, we were all kind of banged up from it, all of us. Uh, a couple of guys had to get stitched up. Uh, Crash Holly had to get some stitches. Uh, Pete Gaff had to get some stitches. So I got a big lump on my head. A couple of guys are screwed up. So, I mean, you know, but it, you know, we all knew we had to go in there and work real tight. Uh, the match wasn't a heavily pushed match on, on the show. But uh, uh, I think Jim Ross put it best uh, the night before I seen him at the hotel, and he kind of felt like that match was going to be a sleeper, and 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 I felt like we did that. Now in that that, that very finish at the the the, the pin at the buzzer, mm-hmm. and on on TV it was like one two, and it sort of was like, was, were you were you in the right? Was was that how it was supposed to go down? Was he supposed to like be putting his hand down for three and your body in the way, or I hate to say it, I hate to say this, but I have no comment about that. Okay. I'm sorry. You have to find it out from those stores, but I, I, I have no comment. Because it was, I mean, I, okay. I'm sorry. Okay, this is this is this is from uh, Mike in Syracuse, and he's talking about an interview you did for our video, and you talked about uh, you were very disappointed how Perry Saturn left ECW and that you would never want to work in the same company with him, and also comments about Aaron O'Grady, you know, Crash Holly. Um, now that these men are in the WWF. Have your opinions of either of them changed? First off, I I don't remember saying that about Perry, to tell you the truth, saying I'd never want to work with the same company again. I'm not saying I didn't say it. I might have said that, but that had to be quite a while ago if I said it. Since then, I mean, for the past two years, Perry and I have definitely, we're friends. Friends fight, you know, And but when wrestlers fight, oh, they got heat. You know, that's the way it is in this business. You can't just be friends and fight. Like, if you and your friend from the gym get into an argument, it's just an argument. You know, when you're a pro wrestler, it's all over the place. Oh, man, these guys got to eat with each other. They don't like each other. I mean, we're friends. Friends fight. Perry and I are completely cool with each other. And as far as Crash Holly, I mean, my first day here, he walked right up to me, shook my hand. He goes, listen, I just like that Perry the Hatchet. I don't want any heat. And I hope everything's cool. And he was just such a professional and a gentleman. He came right up to me. And I was going to do the same thing to him, but he beat me to the punch. And me and him were just completely cool with each other. And I think he'd tell you the same thing. Were you, are you are you surprised at, at uh, how well he's done? I mean, as far as like a guy who you know, I mean, it's funny because it's like uh, whatever it was a year earlier, he was in ECW and and didn't really even and didn't really make it there. Went home and then he went to the WWF, which is um, you know got a lot stiffer competition as far as bodies and stuff. And he's actually you know not that he's a superstar there, but he's made it. You know, he's a he's a guy on the team and it clear. You know, I mean, he's over because everyone's over. You I know, feel, but I mean, he is over. I Dave, I'll tell you, that, I feel he's a super. I feel, and this is you know, like a kiss-ass thing, but I feel 99.9% of our locker room are superstars. I mean, that's the way this company's booked. That's one of the reasons why I came here. It's written that way. Everybody means something when it comes to that damn curtain, and that's the bottom line. And Crash, if you don't think he's a star, come to house shows and watch the pop he gets when his music hits, and he walks out there with that scale and stuff like that. And every every time we go to this guy, gets a great reaction. And, and, and this 24-7 thing that he's been doing has gotten him over even more because it's perfect for his character. You know, it really is. Now, if um, uh, uh, a character like 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 mine or a character like a, I don't know, uh, shit, a character like a, a, a Chris Benoit, hypothetically, I mean, you can't pull off a 24-7 thing. I don't think so anyway because, you, you, you know, these type of characters ain't really going to run from people. But Crash's character fits perfect. You know, he's this little guy that's just scooting and running from everybody, and then he always ends up on top. So, you know, it's uh, I think it's really made him. But he's a hard worker, man. I I mean, I'm the one who referred him to Paul Heyman to, to bring him into, to, uh, well, Spike told me and I told Paul about him to bring him into, you know, into the company, uh, into, um, ECW. I mean, the guy's a very talented guy. He's always been. And just now they're giving him an opportunity and then he, he's scoring with it. Were you uh, disappointed at all that the, uh, Kurt Angle thing went only, you know, I mean, it started out fairly strong and then it kind of, I don't know if it got dropped or something, but they took you guys in different directions? Yeah, I, I was a little, I don't want to say disappointed. I was kind of hoping they would keep going with us. But, you know, I was really new. I'm new. I'm still new, but I was real new, new then. I was only here a couple of weeks. And uh, I don't know what it was. I, I don't know really why they, um, you know, when you're in the WWF, you know, a couple of uh, months, you don't really question no one, Dave. You know, 
You're not going to do that. You know, before you come in, you might think you're going to. But the tone is set when you're here. You know who the bosses are and the main boss. You know your role, and you try and fit in. And then, and then as you earn your stripes a little bit, you pay your dues a little bit, you try and, you know, get over more and more. And, and, and Kurt and I, I, I got a feeling that eventually the company will go back to doing an angle with him and I. I, I think that I really, like I said earlier, I think that we play off each other real well, and we work pretty good together. Um, I'm trying to think. What, uh, as, as far as like your departure from ECW, um, did you expect, uh, just go back to the thing in Chicago, that, that night in Chicago where you lost the title, yeah. I know you had three or four matches afterwards, but that would be, that was, that was, that was kind of like the big hurrah. Everything else was sort of anticlimactic, I felt. Um, Everything else was a waste of time. But yeah, okay. now, in, 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 in that one, in, in that one, what were your thoughts as far as coming out that night? I mean, did you did you know that everyone was going to know you were leaving? Because you know, and 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 just the way they reacted, and the fact that they basically turned on you at the beginning, and then they were all with you at the end, which was kind of a unique situation. Yeah, it was unique. I, when I walked out, I knew that most of them would would know that I was leaving, and I figured I'd get a you sold out type chant, which is a big crock. But um. They're going to chant something, but I didn't expect every one of them to do it, and it was, like, overwhelming. And i got to be honest, I just like a puss or nothing. But it was, it was, you know, before before I took the towel off my head, it was it was affecting me. I, I, it was, like, upsetting because I gave so much to those people for six friggin' years, you know, from merchandise to, to helping train guys to being a team player and being a company man and being a competitor in the ring and busting my ass, coming back from a neck injury that would have put most guys down for good. And, man, they just forgot. They just forgot. And I got pissed. And by the time I hit the ring, I was just like, frig them. I'm just going to go out here, have a good time with Mike Awesome and, and Tanaka. You know, and, and, and I, at that point, I didn't really care about giving the people their money's worth. And I'd never done that before. I didn't care about them because they didn't care about me. And I got pissed. And, and uh, I did my job. Uh, and I felt like it was the right thing to do. And so did Paul to... You know, endorse the new champ as in Mike Awesome, and, and, and then they decided to get with me when, when like, they forgave me for leaving type deal because I handed over the belt. So then I'm like, okay, fine, I forgive you for, you know, healing me when I walked out. You know, you know it's, you know, it's a time, it's a, it's a moment I'm not going to forget, obviously, but, but, um, you know, uh, there's nothing I can do about it. You know, people are always going to pass judgment on you, and, you know, I, I, I made this move for the, to better for my career. Uh, and that is not just money, because it wasn't a money thing. The deal that Paul and I were working out was a was a great deal, you know. And I just felt like it was time to move on. Now, you you just mentioned a second ago, you know, coming back. Um, there was that lag period because that was uh, what was it like August, and you started in WWF, I guess January, and then you had. A few matches in ECW, and that, and you kind of indicated that you didn't, you thought were kind of a waste of time. And then, you know, several months before starting actually with WWF, um, I guess it was kind of a an agreement with I don't know if it was Paul and Vince and you or how that all went down. But how, explain how that that whole period went down. Well, when when I was after I came to Chicago. Yeah, when you pretty much had agreed to go, and before you actually started, you know, it was a couple month period there. You're talking about when I kept wrestling those matches. It was, a, it was a tense period. It was tense between me and Paul because I, it wasn't that I didn't want to go and put the guys over. I, I didn't care about that, even though all these people out there that think they know me and don't know crap about me think that I care about putting people over, and I don't, and I prove that and prove it time and time again. Uh, I didn't. I didn't, wasn't comfortable with, with going in there and working these matches because, like you said earlier, you hit the nail on the head. I felt it was anticlimactic also. That was such a strong, strong moment in Chicago when I, when I left that, that, that ringside area. And to come back now and wrestle Sabu and wrestle Awesome again, you know, and wrestle Van Dam, it was just like, ugh, you know, why? Just, just that old style, you know, 1980s, oh, you gotta put guys over on the way out. Okay. You know, it was, it's just I felt like it was me and Paul were on completely two different pages with that, you know, and, and, and I was not happy about it. I, I, did, I never said I don't want to do it. I did tell him I wasn't comfortable doing it, and emotionally more or less, and I felt like I wasn't going to give the people their money's worth. But, you know, it all worked out. It's water under the bridge. Now, um, as, as far as were you, were you frustrated at all that, uh, you know, it was such a long, you know, a long, I mean, because like a lot of times with wrestlers, you know, if they're off TV for three weeks, they kind of start getting the jitters, you know, because you were actually off TV as a push commodity for a couple of months before your WWF start, 
Um, did, did, did you, like, I'm not saying worry about it because, I mean, there's nothing to worry about, but just kind of get that itch of, like, God, you know, I wish I was in there right now, especially with WF Business being so hot at that period. Yeah, I was. I was definitely antsy, you know, but I knew that, you know, uh, Vince would pick the spot for me to debut. Uh, Paul having me sit home. You know, the man paid me. You know, he did offer so I didn't form ring rust that I could work house shows and stuff and just to keep it in the ring and, and he did offer me that and I give him credit for that but I I said no thanks and I just took the time to hang out with my family and you know my my son was uh, only a couple months old at the time and stuff and spent time with my wife and, and just train and stuff like that, get in better shape and heal up injuries, you know. Uh it was a frustrating time, no, it really really was because we were just sitting home doing nothing, you know, and I wasn't used to doing that. Um, having a son, did that play, or what? 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 Uh, what part did that play in your decision to go to WWE? Or no part? Did they play no part, or was it part of the motivation? Wait, say that one more time. I lost you a little bit. You know what? Having your first son, did that? How much did that play uh, a part in your motivation to want to go to the WWF, or was that not even part of the deal? No, a little bit. Not, not really, Dave. To tell you the truth, it wasn't like a major part of it. It was about. It really wasn't a major part of it. I mean, Paul always took care of me financially. I was very happy with the money he was paying me for, for, for quite a while. And it wasn't that. I mean, yeah, granted, when you work for Vince, you know, there's a lot more financial security for your family, obviously. But, you know, Paul's going to do great, and, and his company's going to survive. And, and, and believe me, a lot of people here at WWF are rooting for him. Uh, that's the truth. And uh, um, I think he's going to do great. And, and if I decide to stay in ECW, I mean, it, I, I felt the same way. I mean, uh my my son being born, it was a small portion, but not really, well, not not a big portion at all. When uh, when Eddie Guerrero and uh, Chris Benoit, Perry Saturn, Dean Malenko all came over uh, at the same time, and you had just started, um, did you feel good in that? You know, one of the stigmas, if you had a stigma going in, it was your height, and you now you had four guys who were, you know, your size, you mm -hmm. know, and yep. um, you know, or your, or your height size anyway. Right, right. Um, that you had guys to work with. They're all, you know, really, really good wrestlers right, that you right. could do programs with. And mm -hmm. you wouldn't, you know, did that make you feel more comfortable? Or was it just like, uh, you know, uh, or was it not even thinking about it? Uh, good question. In a way, I did feel good about it. But then it's like, well, look, you know, here's these other guys that are on the six foot. You know what I mean? But then it was a part of it was like, you know, I thought it was cool coming in here because all these guys are six four, six five, six six. You know what I mean? For the most part, not all of them, but for the most part, I felt like I could stick out. And then when the radicals came in, it was like I couldn't stick out because we were all similar height. You know, so you know, it, it, you know what I mean? Because even though I wasn't as big as the other guys, I figured that I was not as tall. I could stand out. You know, but uh, well, I, I'm glad those guys came in. I mean, it's great for our business and and for WCW let four. So talented workers, uh, young, strong workers go. I mean, it's just completely idiotic on their part. I'm just glad that, you know, we got those guys. Uh, Taz, I, understand, I know that uh, we've got to head to a commercial. I know that you've got to head to uh, a TV taping. Yeah, so, live I want, TV, I, yeah. I know, that's right. Well, that's right. Live TV in just about an hour, uh, about yeah. two hours, I guess, for the Raw show. Um, and you're going to be on the show, and uh, I guess we'll see in just a couple hours uh, your new program. Yep. And I want to... I want to thank you very much for uh, doing the show from uh, the arena. Hi, right, Dave. No problem. And I'm sorry we didn't touch base a couple, like a month or so ago, but my schedule, it, it got so hectic, you know what I mean? So all the fans that thought I was coming on, I want to apologize to them and to you too, okay? Okay, thanks very much. We'll be talking to you soon. Thanks, man. Take care.